Today, I'm going to show you how an attacker can hack anyone to make them go to malicious websites against their will. DNS cache poisoning, or sometimes call it DNS spoofing, is an extremely effective and dangerous attack. But there's something we need to talk about first. Before we do, be sure that you're subscribed and you've hit the bell notification so that you get notified about new videos. So what is it we need to discuss before we can talk about DNS cache poisoning? DNS. You see, DNS is one of those building blocks of technology that many of us take for granted. And like many foundational tech components, unfortunately, security was not a forethought for DNS. Anyhow, what is DNS? Domain Name System, or DNS, is the system for mapping user-friendly domains to non-user-friendly IP addresses. So, you need a new book, so you go to your computer, and you go to your browser, what do you type in? Maybe www.google.com, and you start shopping, right? You don't go and type in 172.217.164.78. That would be way too hard to remember. And that's what DNS is. It tells your computer which exit to take off of the internet highway to access the site that you need to get to. So DNS, or the domain name system, translates human readable domain names, for an example, www.amazon.com, to machine readable IP addresses like we talked about. Now to the fun part. Let's break this down and see how easy it is to hack DNS. And let me explain how this works, and then I'll show you the demo. So here's a very simple explanation of DNS and how an attacker can spoof DNS. And in a second, I'll show you this on a bit level. So in our example, you wanna to go to Google and you wanna search for a new shirt. So this is you and you're on your computer. And what you type in www.google.com, your computer doesn't know where google.com is because your computer speaks binary and it understands IP addresses. Your computer doesn't understand domain names, remember. Computers speak IP addresses in binary. We won't get into the binary of IPs, but just remember that. So when you go to search for that shirt, your computer sends a request to a DNS server. Remember, DNS is domain name server. So we have the server. So your computer asks, where is google.com to that DNS server? So you're looking for google.com, okay? And the DNS server, says google.com is, and I'm just gonna give a well-known 172.217.164.78. Okay, now your computer knows which IP address to go to and it can then route you to the web server of Google, and you can continue shopping. But in this case, we're gonna talk about a local network version of this attack. There is a bad guy on your network. And he wants to send you to his evil website. So what does he do? When he sees that DNS request come through for Google.com, he's gonna say, hey, no, Google.com is not 172.217.164.78. Google.com is 54.3.2.1, okay? And then your computer's gonna believe him because there's no security check on DNS and your computer will send you to that malicious website. And that's how, how a DNS spoof or DNS cache poison works. And this will remain in effect as long as that time to live for that DNS lookup is in effect. Maybe a week, seven days, whatever. So to start DNS spoofing or DNS cache poisoning on an internal network, as an attacker, I have to start with something called ARP poisoning. ARP is the address resolution protocol that devices inside of a network use to figure out who is who, who's the router, who, what switches. Um, who are the servers on the network. So to make this work, I have to get devices on the network to think that I'm the router. So here's how ARP works. The computer on the network needs to get out to the internet. And it's going to go through the router, right? So there are constantly ARP messages going back and forth on the network to 
four devices locally to figure out which MAC address belongs to which device, which IP address, the router, etc. If I can poison that ARP cache, I can set myself up as the new router. So now here is the bad guy, his computer. And with that ARP poison, I tell this computer, no, I am now the router. And he will begin routing his communication through the internet to me. And I will pass on his communication, intercept it, and send it back and forth and start this man-in-the-middle attack. Now, what I can do at this point is, as DNS requests come through here, I can send fake replies back for DNS addresses and poison his cache so that I can send them to the site that I want them to go to, be that a phishing site, a drive-by download, whatever, wherever it is I want them to go. All right, so now for a hands-on demo of how ARP spoofing can be used to poison a DNS cache. This is gonna get really interesting. All right, so let's see how we can do this with a tool in Linux called Ettercap. So before I start up Ettercap, there's a few things I'm gonna to need to change in the configuration to make this work right. So I'm going to cd into etsy slash edder, edder cap. Okay, and it's the DNS file I need to edit. So I'm going to do sudo nano edder.dns. Okay, now, so what I need to do is I need to tell edder cap which DNS records I want to poison before I actually start the tool. And this is the way this is going to work. So in this example, I want to poison the DNS of facebook.com. So right now, if I ping www.facebook.com, I'm getting a reply. Okay. I want to send, if someone goes to facebook.com, I want to send them to another IP address like YouTube or Google. Now, if I was malicious, I might send them to a captive portal page where I can capture credentials, send them to a fake Facebook login, um, but for now, we're just going to do a simple redirect to show you. So, as you can see, when I ping Facebook.com, I'm getting a 31.13.80. Okay? So, we're going to tell EdderCap to use these IP addresses. So, we're going to tell EdderCap instead to use a couple others. Put in an A record. And then just to be safe, I'm going to put in a PTR record as well. Okay, I'm going to save this, control X and save. And if I cat edder.dns, all right, we see those changes in there. So we're good to go. All right, so now let's start edder cap. First thing we need to do is we need to identify host on the network that we can target. So I'm going to do a sniff, a unified sniffing. That's the network interface I want to do it on. Okay, so it's starting to sniff traffic. Host, I'm going to scan for host on this local network. Now I have a host list. Um, and I know that 45 is the computer I want to target. So I'm going to right click and add this to my target list. Okay. And I'm going to plugins. I want to manage plugins. DNS spoof, I'm going to turn on. And I'm going to do ARP poisoning. Sniff remote connections. But remember, ARP poison is how we're going to spoof this DNS. Okay. 
And let's give that a second. I'll come back here and let's initiate some traffic. Actually, flush our DNS. IP config slash flush DNS. Okay. Now, when I did that, now we see we've got an ARP spoof in, we've got a DNS spoof. So this computer ping is failing. So it now believes that this error cap box is the router and it's going to send its traffic to them that's the point in that ARP request so it's going to take dns from here so let's clear this and let's ping www.facebook.com and what do we get now for facebook.com we're returning the ip address that we put in the ettercap dns file it has poisoned the dns to make it believe that facebook.com is this ip Okay, I'm going to stop the man in the middle just to show you what's going to happen if I actually go there. If I were to go to that address, it's going to redirect me to 616.211.175.229. And where is that going to take me? It's actually going to take me to ebay.com. So I have poison DNS to make any request to Facebook to end, redirect to ebay.com. Now, again, if I'm a malicious attacker, I've done this during pen test. I could redirect you to a captive portal I have set up on network, which you have to authenticate to continue using the network. There's lots of things I can do.